Welcome to the Memorial E-Cup presented by Kia. We're down to just three nights to go. We're in the semifinals, and we're going to open up best two out of three tonight with Ty Collins and the Mississauga Steelheads challenging Lucas Vekovsky and the Medicine Hat Tigers. I'm Reed Duffy, pleased to be joined by my broadcast partner, Brandon Scott. And Brandon, what a tournament we have seen so far. As we come down to the end tonight, two teams square off best two out of three, and this is going to be exciting. Yeah, exactly. It's been a phenomenal tournament tournament so far that and we saw a lot of good competitors get eliminated, but we're down to the final four. These guys certainly earned their way here. And it should be interesting to see how a, a best of three changes things where you got to think like with some of the guys that got eliminated yesterday, if they even had a, a second game opportunity. They could have ran away with it. So it should be quite a, a new factor for these guys to, to kind of overcome. When you look at how these two teams got here through round four, the division championships yesterday, it was the Telluride division championship for Lucas Fakovsky and the Tigers. They went first and picked up a 5-3 victory over Danny Kadek and the Saginaw Spirit. Then the Mississauga Steelheads, Ty Collins may be the upset of the day. We thought Trevor Longo and Lucas Fakovsky might have been on the road to taking on one another, and Ty Collins said not so fast. He comes from behind with a six uh sorry with a 7-1 victory over the Vancouver Giants and uh, that one really I think showed what Ty Collins can do in this game killed some penalties early on road to taking the Sorrento division title and Brandon when you look at what Collins did in that game I think he opened some eyes yesterday yeah, exactly. Ty Collins, he's been more of an underdog throughout this tournament, but he keeps improving and getting better and better each passing game. The only thing Ty Collins really needs to work on right now is staying a little more disciplined. I think if he comes out of the gate taking as many penalties as he did yesterday, he could be in some problems against a tough Medicine Hat team. Well, and we know what this Medicine Hat Tigers team under the control of Lucas Fakovsky can do. They can score a whack load of goals and they can shut the door. Mad Solgard, if you're looking at a player of the tournament, right now you got to think the netminder for the Medicine Hat Tigers has got to be at the top of the list. I mean, before yesterday's game, he had allowed only two goals in the tournament. Yesterday he allows three. I mean, we've seen teams give up six, seven, eight goals and still win games in this tournament. And yet Svekovsky has been defensively as sound as it comes. And he's been able to put up goals to his credit. That outburst for Cole Sillinger at the beginning of the third period yesterday, I think Brandon really told the tale, those back-to-back -back goals. Yeah, and let's not forget, they were against the, the most potent offense in the tournament in the Saginaw Spirit and Danny Kadic. And he only allowed three goals. That's very impressive. So I expect uh, Lucas to lean on his goaltender again for a big night. Uh, in this best of three against Ty Collins and the Steelheads. And if you're Ty Collins, you've been getting contributions from right up and down your lineup. We've seen uh, Cal Christner with some great games. We've seen Max Dodig jump into the offense. I mean, we've seen some of the usual customers in Schwint and Hardy and Washkrick up there, Nicholas Kanati, Ty Collins himself. So it, it's really been a full team effort for Ty Collins and the Steelheads. But you nailed it, Brandon, that he's got to stay out of the box because you cannot hand power play opportunities to Lucas Vekovsky and the Tigers. They're just too good. Yeah, exactly. And, and to his credit, Ty Collins has done a great job on the penalty kill. 
Uh, he, he doesn't give too much up with this with the sound defensive game, but with the man advantage, you can only hold on for so for so long, Reed. Okay, here we go. Medicine Hat and Mississauga. Game one. It's the Tigers in the black, trimmed with the white and orange. It's the Mississauga Steelheads in the whites, trimmed with the blue. And Chazowski looking to center for Svekovsky right away. He'll get it right back. Puck poked loose by Bjorg Vikholm. And Mississauga looking for a little bit of transition. Up and over the line. It was looking for Washkarek. Poked away quickly. And it'll be taken by Clayton along for Baker. Back for Clayton, who's got some room to work on the right wing side. Stepping low. Feeds out front. Chazowski scores. 1-0 Medicine Hat as they jump on the board early. And that is what Lucas Svekovsky does so well, Brandon. He moves up the ice in five-man units. Yeah, exactly. And this is the right foot you want to start on here if you're Medicine Hat. Uh, they wield the puck from down low in the corner. Just throws it on front. It seems to go through, uh, like, I want to say three bodies were all around him. He somehow gets that puck on a, on a thread right on the tape into the back of the net, and that's exactly how Lucas wants to start this matchup. Draw one back by the Steelheads. Ty Collins finds himself down a goal. Two and a half minutes into this first period. Remember, best two out of three for the first time in the tournament. We are past single elimination. As Collins down the boards, feeds back to Penman. Penman for Collins, working the right wing side. Now up to the point, tried the middle of the line, and the puck got poked away. Svekovsky extending the strides but it'll be just swept away. Collins through his feet. He's going to draw power play. Steelheads were tremendous with the man advantage yesterday. Penman over the line. Works to the left point. Now Kanadi in front. Just couldn't find the target. Puck taken back to the corner. Hardy's there. Works to the point. Sharp. Walks along the line. Plays for Hardy. Down low through the corner. Kanadi has a look out front. Plays for Schwint. That one off of a body, Schwint collects, retains possession, feeds out front, finally. Uh, the Tigers will get a touch, 13-18. Left to play in the first period, and the first power play is going to go the way of the Mississauga Steelheads. Yeah, it almost looked like a game of keep away there, Reed, with the, how well Ty Collins was moving the puck around. But as you mentioned previously, he had a great day on the power play unit yesterday where he scored two big back-to-back -back power play goals. And he's about to have a lengthy five on three. Looked like Hardy was tripped in the corner trying to make a play, and it's going to be a minute and 41. This is a massive opportunity for Ty Collins. Yeah, he could really uh, tie this one up and even gain the lead with this amount of time on the power play. Krebs will take off the draw win. Puck is tossed down the rink. Del Mastro. Up ahead for Washkirk. He'll jam on the brakes on the right side. Cuts to the slot. Plays out top. Ola Bjorg Vikholm walks in. Wanted Washkirk. That's stolen away. And it'll be played up ahead. And into the offensive end for the Medicine Hat Tigers. Working the right wing side before it's stolen back by Del Mastro. Nice job thus far from Lucas Fakovsky and the Medicine Hat Tigers. And they're going to force an offside which will give them a little bit of relief. Yeah, so far an excellent job on the five on three by uh, Lucas Shrekoski as he's doing a great job of not really allowing the Steelheads to really get anything going here. McNabb was bested on the draw and that allows the offensive zone possession. Kanadi out front looking for Collins. That wouldn't work. And now Brown straight up ahead. We're back to even in full five on five as the Tigers able to get out of the penalty trouble early. Medicine Hat retains the 1-0 lead. Clayton over the line for Lochner. Left wing side, in front, they score! Oh, that's huge. They kill the five on three, and then Lochner feeds Sillinger, and it's a 2-0 Tigers lead. Cole Sillinger has a couple of big goals already in this tournament, and he does it again right here. Just fin finishing an excellent play uh, out in front to give Medicine Hat a 2-0 lead, and... It just killing off a five on three itself is a big momentum shifter. And now to add a goal to boot, this is quite the first period for the Tigers. It was Sillinger last night who took the lead in the third period and then bubbled that lead to two within just moments. And he's got another one here to give Medicine had a two nothing lead. And this is where things get dangerous, Brandon, if you're Ty Collins. 
Yes, it's early in the game, and Max Dodig heads off for roughing after the whistle. And now Medicine Hat with a two-goal lead with Mad Sogard in goal have a power play. Yeah, so this is a big opportunity for Medicine Hat to kind of run away with game one here. Clayton over for Sillinger. Chance in front. That one denied as Hopwell was on it. Puck taken along for Ola Bjorgvik home. He'll work in, left wing side, feeds up front, they score! Mississauga gets one back shorthanded. Richard Whitaker right on the doorstep in the shorthanded cross crease pass, picks it up, and Mississauga cuts the lead in half. Yeah, Whitaker does an excellent job just kind of getting away from the defenders there, almost sneaking behind them. And then once he gets that feed in front, all he had to do was tap it in. And that's about the only way he has been able to beat Mad Sogard in the tournament as they try it again. Washkirk for Whitaker, it wouldn't go. Svekovsky drops it back. Van Imp walks on. Turns on the right wing boards, has a look up. Nothing to be able to play on to there. And Krebs will regroup and neutralize. Krebs steps on, feeds Sillinger on the back pass. In front for Kemp and Kai Edmonds. We'll be able to find that with 7.07 left to play in the opening frame. Yes, so far uh, this game is just as we expected as it was a very tight contest so far. And unfortunate here as we've lost connection with one of the players. And Brandon, that's going to create the circumstance that we saw last night. So what I got to imagine is we're going to uh, get everything back together here, start a new game, and then play uh, two and a half periods as there was uh, just about seven minutes left in the first uh, in this one. 2-1 uh, Medicine Hat the lead. So we'll have that uh, marked down. And anything that is scored moving forward will be added on to uh, that score line, that 2-1 score line that we were at. Yeah. It looks like uh, we're, we're going to be ready to hop into this game uh, rather quickly. It looks like there was like an odd technical issue. I want to say on Ty Collins' side right now. So uh, hopefully we'll get this game back and ready to start. As it, it was a very tight contest coming in. I really felt like Medicine Hat, they started strong, but Ty Collins is doing what he does best, and that's uh, hanging around and taking uh, opportunities as he can. Yeah, and that's, unfortunately, that's a tough one there in terms of, of a glitch. And, I mean, that could be anything. I know there are parts of uh, Ontario that are uh, expecting a bit of a storm to be rolling in over the next 24 to 48 hours. So it, it could be just about anything that uh, would have affected um, the Internet connection for, for Ty Collins there. Uh, and, and it could be just as simple as, um, you know, a plug fell out of the wall. Uh, it's always hard to tell. Uh, but luckily it looks like we're going to be able to get this back moving fairly quickly. And uh, Brandon, what did you see in that first 13 minutes? Yeah. Well, so far I've seen uh, quite the start that we expected uh, out of these two teams. Uh, Medicine had like Lucas uh, wasted little time to get on the scoreboard on there. And, and then Ty Collins, uh, he had a big opportunity on that five, five on three that he couldn't connect. And I'm wondering if maybe that's going to be something come uh, the final buzz of the game that he's going to regret that he didn't seize that opportunity. But uh, Ty Collins, as the game wore on, uh, it, he really started to settle down and feel a little more comfortable. Uh, I just think out of the gate, he may, might have had a bit of nerves. So what, what we're going to do, we're going to play two full periods of a new game, and we'll just have to wait and see uh, how they I, – I, it looks like I think we're going to play – uh, about seven minutes of a third period to pretty much make up. And yeah, we're getting word now and, and our uh, producer Pascal, who's done an incredible job for us the last two and a half weeks, just got into my ear and uh, let me know that uh, it will be two periods and then seven minutes of the third. So this game one, when you see it on the screen, will end uh, at 13 minutes still on the clock of the third period, but we're adding that time together and as we mentioned, any goals will be added to the 2-1 scoreline that we were at when connection was lost. So, Brandon, once again, our guys have done a brilliant job 
in a tough spot, connection lost. We get the player back in. Everybody works it to get the solution really quickly. And we're going to be back up and running here in moments. And it's going to be a simple fix. Yeah, exactly. Um, we experienced a couple of times throughout this tournament that we get some freak actions like this. And uh, so it's nothing that these guys haven't seen. So uh, we're up and running and ready to rock again, Reed. So Washkirk and Sillinger on the draw. And it's going to be Baker moving his way forward. So the score is going to be at the top of your screen. And you can see the accurate scores. Wow, that one blistered off the goalpost to open up. Yeah, Jake Koski just he knows how to start a game really well. Yeah, he gets off the block so well. As the Steelheads looking to bring it out of the zone, Del Mastro in trouble. And there were three Tigers in the area looking to pounce on that. Didn't realize Tigers were pack hunters, but certainly they are right there. As Chizowski's going to take the puck low. And that one uh, looks like up and out of play. So the faceoff will stay in the Mississauga zone. Kanati off the faceoff. Gets pushed to the back of the net. Penman will take. Kanati. Playing on for Sharp, not a Schwint. 2-1, the Tigers lead here in game one as Baker plays on to Brown. Brown tries to get loose. Kanati steals, and up ahead goes Schwint. Schwint trying to work to the left wing side and offside as one of the steelheads on the right side jumped. Yeah, it looks like a little too fancy along the blue line. That will cause an offside. 14.45 to go in this frame. As Van Imp drops it back for McNabb. He'll play on for Sillinger, who works wide left wing side. Back for McNabb. On to Van Imp. His shot! And Kai Edmonds gets down to that. Penman, rink wide. Dumps back. Looked for Collins ahead. And it just got out over the line before it was turned over to Chisowski. And that would have been really dangerous if the Steelheads had not gotten that cleanly out of the zone first. Yeah, exactly. You can't be uh, giving any more opportunities a Medicine Hat than what they've already received. He's just way too good of a player in this tournament. Puck trapped along the boards. Lochner keeps it alive. Worked from the left side all the way to the right. Now Baker steps down to Kemp. York Vic Holm gets in front of that. 11.40 left to play in this period. Christner up ahead. Works wide right wing side. Takes for Bjorg Vic Holm. Looked back for Christner, and that one will get to the end boards. Puck gets wrapped around for Brown. Now Lochner. Has a man wide. It's Kemp who made the pass shorter, cutting across the blue line. But the long feed down to the corner goes awry. Steelhead's looking for the counter. Kemp steals it on the way out of the zone. Plays wide, left wing side. Drops the shoulder. Looks like he might try to drive instead. Takes to the outside. His shot, that knocked aside by Edmonds. And Bjorg Vic Holm up and out of the zone. Dodig, who's had a brilliant tournament. Works the puck into the corner. Gets swept off of his stick. Christner. Up for Bjorg Vic Holm. Now Spence. Back for Christner. This is a line that's done a lot of damage for Mississauga. Very quick unit. Christner tries to front, look for Collins, and that just wouldn't work out. Yeah, it looks like he tried to thread the needle on a cross crease pass there, but the defense were hanging on strong. Baker tried that one through the middle for Hoppel. It was stolen by Penman at the last possible second. Dodig on ahead, tried for Del Bell Belouz in front. Stubbs was there as well, but the puck is taken along. Danielson. Up for Hopwell. Aguman for McCary. Trying on the left wing side. McCary gets right back to it. Now Wilms into the offensive end. Three jump up, they score. Danielson on the doorstep. It's 3-1, Medicine Hat. Yeah, that was a great goal. It looked like it was a two-on-one going down after Medicine Hat forced the turnover early in the neutral zone. And then just uh, some pretty passing out front. And they'll make some 
no mistake about it. Just beating a glove side on Tay Edmonds. So uh, that's a great goal for Medicine Hat. This is one that they really needed. It looks like the, the goal scoring were calming down there. But Medicine Hat storms right back, and now uh, he adds to his lead. Bit of a Bob Nystrom style on that tip as he just extended the stick as far as he could out. Ended up one hand on it and just poked it past the goaltender. Nice job uh, by Lukas Fekovsky working with Danielson to uh, get that into the back of the net. Yeah, and uh, right now the, the lead it gets that much harder for uh, Ty Collins to come back. Do it in game one here. Of course, referring to the, I believe it was 1980 Stanley Cup winning goal by Bob Nystrom against the Philadelphia Flyers. Just the tip on the pass from John Tonelli. Uh, Sharp plays that along for Hardy. Sometimes it pays off to have a photographic memory. As... Yeah, that's a little before my time, Reed. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, before mine, too, but I watch a lot of video. As, oh, no, connection is dropped out, and we're going to uh, have to do some math on the amount of time that had transpired in the uh, frame, the first frame of this game, uh, to figure out how far we're going to go. So I'm just going to I'm just going to make the note, uh, Brandon, that right now three one for the Medicine Hat Tigers. As uh, we'll, we're going to try to get back to this as soon as we can. Uh, Two thirty nine was left on the clock in that period. So our guys, uh, unfortunately, off the top of my head, that's. Uh, that's a little bit too much math for me to, to, to be able to pull off on the fly. So I'm sure our guys will be working out to see how much time we'll have to play in, in starting a new game. But that's got to be tough for both sides right now because there's some momentum for uh, the Medicine Hat Tigers. And Ty Collins was really looking to get something going. And it's just a stop and start to it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a, a difficult uh, what's going on right now. It looks like uh, there's some uh, connection issues going on on Ty Collins, but he's saying his uh, stream is flawless uh, before uh, it just crashes. So it's a little bit of a mind puzzler there. And then, of course, uh, so there were seven minutes remaining on first, and then 239, was it, Reed? Yeah, 239 was left in, in that second one. So uh, I believe that means that we've played – uh, roughly uh, 13, and so we played roughly about 30 minutes of of the game. So um, maybe that means that we're going to play a period and a half of another. Um, we'll have to get official word, but just in rough math, and it, with the way the clock works in this tournament, it moves so quickly that we're we're kind of working in in roundabouts at the same time. So I would think it would it would translate to about a period and a half that we still need to. Uh, that we still need to play. Yeah, exactly. I, I got to agree with you on your math skills on that one, Reed. So uh, hopefully this doesn't blow up in our faces. Uh, uh, you're just going off the top of our head right now. It, yeah, and exactly. To, and you have to wonder uh, for the players, how much of a momentum killer is this really going to be for the game? Uh, having always uh, start and stop and pick it up again. It, it's, uh, it looked like even in that second game, they're a little bit of a, a slower start, a little more conservative play of the two guys. It's more of a run and gun style. Well, and I, I think part of that could be the situation of the game because if you're Ty Collins, uh, you know you can't give up the next one and get down three. But at the same time, if you're Lucas Vakovsky, you don't want to give up the next one because if Ty Collins can pull back within a goal, that's momentum on his side. And we've seen what a force momentum can be in this tournament. The last two games last night being fairly epic comebacks. Yeah, they say the worst lead to have is a 3-1 lead, Reed. As, uh, it, it almost feels like uh, you got two goals ahead, there's no chance, but then you get one, and next thing you know, it's a one-goal game. So if so, if you're Lucas right now, he needs to keep his foot on the gas pedal. If I was hearing that correctly in my headset, we're, we're going to a period and a half for, th for this game. So we'll play the first period and then half of the second period to decide – game one of the series looks like we were right Reed in our math Whew. it's always a little bit dangerous so we'll play this full period out and then 10 minutes into the second period as the puck taken in low by the Medicine Hat Tigers Fakovsky has a look out front Chisowski after it 
And that'll be taken and played up ahead by the Mississauga Steelheads. Puck thrown aside. Sillinger on to Spakovsky. Played it back across for Clayton, who looks on to Kai Edmonds' goal. And Edmonds will play it into the corner. Puck tossed up ahead. Two steelheads are spilled down, and it looks like Mississauga is going to have the man advantage here. Big opportunity for them to get back into the game as Hardy charges over the line. Hardy pulls up for Sharp. Delays. Now Hardy once more. On for Del Mastro. Fed that in front. Hardy wanted it there. And that'll be touched up in the corner by Clayton. 15-36 to be played in the period. And this is a big chance. Yeah, we saw how lethal Ty Collins' power play was in the semis. So I expect him to, to put out a solid effort right here. He couldn't have any luck on a five-on-three earlier in this game. So hopefully he could change that right here to bring himself within one. Intercept for the power play unit. Puck thrown to the front of the net. Sogard can't get down on top of it. And it's a goal for Cole Schwint. Mississauga pulled back to within one. It's three to two on the power play. Yeah, that's a rare sight seeing Matt Sogard uh, not uh, cover up the puck. But it was a loose puck out in front where Ty Collins uh, just kept at it to put his hard hat on and went to work in front of the net. And that's how he buried that one on the power play. And now it looks like this is a brand new hockey game read as he's down within one. So 15-10 to go in the period. Puck driven to the front of the net. Kemp tries it. It ends up around back of the goal. Penman will look to bring it out. Hardy slows it. Lochner steals the neutral ice. Lochner can't get it cleanly through the crowd. In over the line, Portacalis. His drive. Sogard's got to knock that down, and he'll hang on for the whistle and a faceoff that'll come to his right with 13.03 to be played in the period. Yeah, you have to think after scoring that big goal for Mississauga, you got to think that there's a little momentum right now for the Steelheads. So, yeah, the actual total in the game at this point, 3-2 to two in favor of the Medicine Hat Tigers and the puck to the side of the goal. Tried for it again. That'll get knocked away. McNabb looking to sweep forward. On to Kemp. Little jump through the crowd. Knocked off his stick. Lochner to the line. McNabb for Van Imp. He'll turn. Delays. Back for McNabb. Looking for a lane. Lochner, quick little pop pass. That one knocked down, but Kemp keeps it going. Penman around back of his own goal. Has to clear this out for the Steelheads. Comes off of a leg. Kemp keeps it alive. Has a man to the front. It's Brown. Just poked off his stick, and the pass won't work out. Christner gets it out to Pruder, and they avoid the damage there. Pruder the other way, tries it through the space, and Sogard found it and played it on calmly. Agman can't get it cleanly along. It'll be right back into the zone. Portacalis trying to get through the danger. And that'll be played along for Hopwell. Across for Danielson. Left wing side, tried to pull to the front of the net. Puck taken off his stick. Steelheads. Looking up and out, 6.54 to go in the frame. Puck played to the line, fired into a body, continued along, Stubbs back out top, circling with it, Bjorkvik Holm steps down, Del Bell Belouz right along the goal line, tried it in front, couldn't get it to work, Callahan there, Stubbs to the corner, pardon me, that was Dodig for Stubbs now, back for Dodig. Into the right wing corner. Out front, Del Bell Blues scores. Luca Del Bell Blues ties this one up at three. Yeah, that was just a phenomenal sequence by the Steelhead moving the puck around the outside and remaining patient until they get a, uh, an option of what they liked in front of the net. And that was just a beautiful play. And, and what a goal. What a big goal for Mississauga here to tie the game up at three. Puck brought in all the line by the Tigers. It's been all Ty Collins since we resumed. And Sharp looks up ahead. Lucas Vakovsky, I'm sure, wants to settle things down and get back to what he was doing earlier on in the game and taking the puck right to the Mississauga goal. And he might have a chance here. Sillinger steals it away from Del Mastro, who just got the stick in to poke that loose. Sillinger off the left wing boards, feeds in front, and they're right back on top. Lucas Vakovsky 
continues the trend, scores with himself. It's 4-3 Medicine Hat. Yeah, that was just a, a great play by Sillinger there. At first, he gets the puck poke too far ahead of him, so he couldn't. He lost out on that breakaway opportunity, but then he regained the puck, and, and with his eyes on the prize there, he spots Tchaikovsky right outside, and he will make no mistake about it. Tchaikovsky from Sillinger, who continues his hot hand. Clayton in over the line for the Tigers. Works low, feeds out front, and that was nearly doubling up. Weissblatt out top. Worked along the line, Clayton back to the corner, Wilms quickly along in the right wing side. Clayton over for Weissblatt, low for Wilms, in front for Anderson, and that one just denied. Del Mastro in behind the goal. The Tigers turning up the tempo. Puck played up and out, Schwint onto Porta Callis, two seconds and one. Puck poked away from him, and we will go to the intermission. 10 minutes to go in this game, Brandon, and the Medicine Hat Tigers saw the charge from the Steelheads and stopped them in their tracks. Yeah, exactly. That period uh, almost felt like uh, it was all Mississauga up until the tail end where uh, Lucas Tchaikovsky just kind of took over and really showed why he was leading this game up until this uh, period. Thanks for watching the Memorial E-Cup presented by Kia. Be sure to enter for your chance to win daily prizes and a chance at winning a grand prize of a $1,000 prepaid Visa gift card. Today's promo code is Memorial Cup, and you can enter the contest at chl.ca slash Memorial E Cup. Once again, today's promo code is Memorial Cup, and you can enter the contest at chl.ca slash Memorial E Cup. So this is where it gets kind of funky. Ten minutes to go in this game, and it's a 4-3 lead for the Medicine Hat Tigers as they look to take game one. Vekovsky up and out of the zone. Charged onto by Baker. Worked it down the right wing boards. Knocked away. Taken right back. Chisowski delays. And that one off of a leg. Back to the corner. Vekovsky in front. Sillinger just missed. It just rolled wide of the post. Kanadi on to Sharp. In over the line. Sharp has that swept away. Baker looks forward. Now Chisowski, chance ahead. Sillinger gaining on the rush. And a poke check from Kai Edmonds knocks it to the corner. Puck played back to the line. That drive from McNabb. Sticked aside by Edmonds. Puck around the back. And it'll be carried on and out by the Steelheads who need to get one here. Down to five minutes to go. And Brandon, this is back to what Svekovsky does so well. Control the puck and make his opponent sweat. Yeah, exactly. He just uh, he does a great job of seeing where all five guys are. He just moves the puck around with some pretty passes, and he'll hold on to it till he sees the right option. McNabb up ahead. Brown in front of the goal, and that one turned aside. Right back out front. Knocked wide of the net. Portacalis gets to it. Sharp on to Hardy. Two and a half to go in game one. Hardy approaches the net off of a skate, and that one rolled wide of the goal. Just over two minutes to go. Svekovsky goes indirect. It's going to be a weird situation, but Ty Collins might have to pull his goaltenders. Brown centers, and they score. That'll make it a two-goal lead. Brown to Hopwell on the doorstep, and Corson Hopwell makes no mistake. It's 5-3 Medicine Hat. Yeah, what a goal here right, out, right off the rush. As you can see, him breaking in, uh, just getting around the defender. As he went hard nose straight to the net and finally uh, sees a some hole out there. It looks like Kay Evans, he, he was covering just about all of that net except for an inch. And Hoppo just takes advantage of that. Puck is played for Collins. On for Pruder. But Danielson will turn it back up and out of the medicine hat zone. 30 seconds left in game one. And this will be a big lead for Lucas Vekovsky as McCary tries it at the side and that is going to do it game one is now in the books as the miss as the medicine hat tigers pull a 5-3 victory in game one of the series to take the advantage and brandon that's a big advantage if you're lucas fakovsky momentum on his side 
Yeah, and the pressure's now on Ty Collins to come back in game two because this is now an elimination game in the Memorial E Cup in this uh, final four. As a, You'll see uh, now uh, Ty Collins, he'll get a chance to play as the home team in the second game. We go to break. Will an adjustment to the Paramount Fine Food Center in Mississauga make the difference for Ty Collins? We'll find out. Svekovsky and the Tigers, a 5-3 victory in Game 1. Their chance to advance to the Memorial League Cup Final is coming up next. For 60 teams across North America, pursuit of this trophy is at the top of their list. It's a goal they aim for when they first pull on a team jersey. It's not an easy road, from training camp to the grind of the regular season, the hopes of a long playoff run leading to a league championship. This nine month journey brings out the best and all focus is on the final step. If the Stanley Cup is the holy grail for the National Hockey League, the Memorial Cup is the elusive prize for junior hockey. Weighing just over 40 pounds, this symbol of excellence is engraved with over 3,000 names that tell a story of the young men who have competed for it. Young hockey players have dreamt of winning this title, of being named champion. Icons of the game have challenged for it, but fell short. The cup was first handed out in 1919 to honor and remember those that gave their lives fighting World War I. In 2010, the Canadian Hockey League rededicated it to the memory of all fallen Canadian military personnel. For many players, this is the summit, the best they will ever be, the highest mountain they will conquer. For others, it will be a chapter in a career about to unfold at another level. The list of winners is impressive. Powerhouse teams that delivered. Surprise teams that weren't expected to contend. Teams that simply went about their business on the ice. All were waiting for those final seconds to tick off. And the burst of emotion realizing they are the champions. When a hockey dream can become a reality, it is the Memorial Cup. Welcome back to the Memorial E Cup presented by Kia. Through one game of this series, Brandon Lucas Fakovsky has a 1 0 series lead after a 5 3 victory with his offense and Mad Sogard in net. It's going to be tough for Ty Collins, but we know how resilient he's been in this tournament. Still a lot to be decided. Yeah, game one was very tight between these two competitors. And I really feel like uh, anyone could take game two, but the, the pressure is going to be on Ty Collins because this is now an elimination game for him. The venue changes. We go from Medicine Hat to Mississauga. Will the result be the same? Only time will tell. Game two coming your way next. <laughs>
Welcome to the Memorial E Cup presented by Kia. If you're just joining us, game two of semifinal number one in game one of the series, Lucas Svakovsky and the Medicine Hat Tigers got a 5 3 victory over Ty Collins and the Mississauga Steelheads. It was tough, it was hard fought, and game two will likely be no different with Ty Collins back to the wall. It's Reed Duffy, pleased to be joined by my broadcast partner, Brandon Scott. And Brandon, game one, Ty Collins was right there, blow for blow until what we've seen happen before. Two goals in the third for the Medicine Hat Tigers. Salt the game away. Lucas Fakovsky just has a knack for those big moments. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what he lives for. He loves the big pressure cookers, and he also loves to start the game as he always gets a quick opportunity right on net at the very beginning of the puck drop. And then also when he needs a big goal come late in the third period or in the third period, he will also get that one. And I would say almost the pivotal point in that game was when he killed off that five on three. It really looked like Ty Collins had a good opportunity to stamp himself in the lead there, but he, he couldn't get inside the, the zone and find the back of the net. And for Ty Collins and the Mississauga Steelheads, you just can't count them out. How many times in this tournament have we seen him get his back pressed to the wall and he is as cool and as calm as they come? You got to believe that he's going to be able to reset for this game too. Is there pressure? Yes, but I don't think he's out of this until a final whistle blows. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be a tough one, That, but the pressure is really going to be on Ty Collins as he needs a big game, too, because uh, this is an elimination game for him. Elimination game, and the tough part of this is we've talked about it all tournament. Brandon, one of the big difference makers has been Mad Sogard in between the pipes for the Medicine Hat Tigers. He has been so, so good for Lucas Svekovsky, and uh, the most he's allowed in a game is three. It's happened twice between the way Svekovsky plays defense and the towering netminder behind him. It's been tough sledding to get any offense against Medicine Hat. Yeah, exactly. If there's a goaltender of the tournament award, it definitely has to go to Matt Sogard. 100%. Kian Washkirk, Cole Sillinger, head up for the draw. Washkirk wins it back. Bjorg Vikholm carries across the line, feeds the middle for Washkirk. And you see right away Ty Collins looking to get some pressure going. Clayton. Looking ahead out of his own zone. Slash from the backside and a delayed penalty coming to the Steelheads. This is where things get dangerous. Of course, in the last round against Trevor Longo, we saw Ty Collins survive. But can Lucas Svekovsky maybe put a little bit more heat on his opponent with a power play here? Yeah, Ty Collins has by far took the most penalties in this tournament, but one benefit he got out of that, he's superb when it comes to killing off, killing them off. He certainly is. Power play here for the Tigers. Puck tossed into the corner. Retrieved out top of the formation. Carried along the line. Played over right in front. Edmonds had to make a big save. Van Imp rescued it along the sideboards. That'll be taken around behind. Bjorg Vikholm will get to it and play it up ahead for Whitaker, who walks to the left wing side. Whitaker. Had a look there for Del Mastro. Now feeds it onto him. The drive. And that one off the blocker of Sogard. Buck will be carried along and out. Clayton up to the line. Has Sillinger. Back for Clayton. He'll step down. Svekovsky was in behind the net. Clayton looks him off. Works the boards. Now feeds Svekovsky in front. Back for Clayton. Tried a little give and go there. And that just wouldn't go. As we're back to even in full five on five with Hardy attacking to the slot. Feeds on to Whitaker on the backhand. Back in front for Hardy. Great job by Clayton to interrupt that. Hardy tried it back for the front of the net. And as he got the stride going, he's tripped down. Mississauga kills one. Now they get a chance for a power play. Yeah, exactly. This is a good start here for Ty Collins. Hopefully he can get a power play goal. He got one in, in game one so far tonight, so let's see if he can get another. Puck dumped into the Mississauga and sharp there. Can't get it cleanly, but Penman follows up. Penman works for Collins coming up and out of the zone. Collins in over the offensive blue line. Looking to attack low. Collins circles right wing side has sharp over his shoulder plays lower for Schwint instead Schwint turns 
Puck forced back to the boards. Now carried along Kanadi. Around the edge. Kanadi has a look up. Can't snap that through. Sharp back in front. Stolen away by Sillinger, who turns with it in the last 10 seconds of the penalty kill. Clayton up and out. Tried to feed a man racing into the offensive zone, and instead they'll turn back and play defense as they get the five on five. Collins not able to make the play in over the line. Puck stolen though by Kanadi, who works wide left side. Aiden Pruder's there. Pruder across the front of the net. Sogard down, extends out, gets the glove on it, and it'll be played quickly along. Kemp up in the rush. Kemp working left wing side. Pulls up to the line. Clayton looks to step down. Wanted to play to the end boards. Instead, he'll go back to Lochner. Now along the line, Clayton gets it back, working from the right point. In some trouble there. Shovels it over. Baker stepped on. Pardon me, that's McNabb stepped on. Now back to Clayton. Shot on. And Edmonds will make the quick stop and play it around for Callahan. Nine minutes left to go in the first period. End to end we go. Doting in over the line for Christner. Poked off his stick. Spence follows up. Plays to the line. Callahan back for Spence. Snaps it through the crowd. They score. Somehow that got in and through the equipment of Mad Sogard and rolled out the other side and in. one nothing Mississauga. Yeah, that was an innocent looking uh, point shot where it looks like Aiden Pruder might have gotten a twig on that. I'm not quite sure, but that's definitely going to be one that Matt Silgard's going to want back as uh, that isn't something you see too often uh, as one sneaking past him. Spence with the back foot snapshot from the line. Pruder gets credit for the goal, so he did get the stick on it, but that one took all kinds of funny pinball bounces into the back of the net as Hardy feeds along. They nearly doubled the lead. Van Imp instead turns the other way. Svekovsky can't get it cleanly through the crowd. Sharp turns away from one. In over the line. Chaz Sharp. Run out of space by Svekovsky, but he didn't get the puck. Penman now has it poked loose. Break away for Svekovsky. In on Edmonds to the forehand. What a stop from Kai Edmonds. Unbelievable. James Hardy going the other way. Looking for transition. Washkrik. Wanted the side of the net, that gets poked loose. Svekovsky up ahead. Working wide for Chisowski. Back for Svekovsky. Now Sillinger tried to cut through two, and it was the second man who was able to disrupt. That was Washkrik. Washkrik, chip and chase. And the Tigers will immediately take it back. Up in the rush is Sillinger. Over the line. Delays on the left wing side. Shot was blocked. Svekovsky dumped on a or jumped on a random uh, loose puck. And now the play will be carried back to the line for the Tigers. Out top. Puck was fired and it went just wide of the net. Whitaker will pick it up in over the line for Del Bell Blues. He's got a spin back. And it's knifed away from him as Sillinger will look up in the rush again. Down to seven seconds left in the period. Sillinger feeds out. It's played right to the side of the net by Chisowski. I think he wanted it in front for Svekovsky. Time will expire in the frame, and it will go to the locker room with a 1-0 lead for the Mississauga Steelheads. And, Brandon, if you're Ty Collins, you needed to have it. Yeah, exactly. This game has slowly turned into a run-and-gun style where it looks like both teams are taking chances on plays and a lot of great opportunities at both ends of the uh, at both ends of the rink. Still only one goal to show for it though. Thanks for tuning in to the Memorial E Cup presented by Kia. Be sure to follow the Canadian Hockey League on Instagram and Twitter by following CHL Hockey and stay connected on Facebook by following the Canadian Hockey League. We head to the second period. Washkrick and Lochner on the draw. And it'll be one back by the Steelheads. Hardy turns wide, feeds the slot for Whitaker, saved by Sogard, rebounds, batted down, and in, Kian Washkarik doubles the lead, it's 2-0. This has got to be a relief for Ty Collins to get that 2-0 lead right now, as uh, he needed a fast start in the second period if he wants to hang on to it, and he did exactly that with that big goal by one of their big premier players on the Steelheads. Yeah, they desperately needed that one to go. 
and they got it. And now it's Lucas Smekowski for the first time in the tournament really sees himself with some adversity, Brandon, down a pair. As Chazowski will carry back into his own zone, Clayton follows it all the way back below his own goal line. How will the Tigers respond to the adversity? Baker to the offensive blue line. Turns back. Clayton was there as the safety valve. Now Chazowski in to the slot. They score. That's how you respond. Cole Sillinger right down Main Street. It's 2-1 as Medicine Hat cuts the lead in half. Cole Sillinger is quickly beginning to get a name for himself for some clutch goals in this tournament, and he does it right there. Look, right when Lucas Drakowski really needed to get a goal to cut this lead in half and uh, stop the momentum from really building for Ty Collins, Cole Sillinger comes out there and buries a, a nice little, after a nice little feed. And once again, this game gets ever so close. A one-goal game, 16-20, to be played in the second period. Bjorkvik home, up and out of the zone for Schwint, who will work his way through neutral ice. Attacking at the Medicine Hat defense. Now Schwint turns back and plays it a little bit aimlessly back into his own zone. Bjorkvik home has that poked away from him. It'll be Del Mastro circling away from trouble. Long feet ahead. Icing against the Steelheads. 14-40 to go in the second period. Yeah, Ty Collins needs to be careful here with, uh, with that last play there. He needs to just settle down. He can't give any opportunities to Medicine Hat because me, me and you both know Reed. He will take advantage of it. Brown off the draw. Got it to the front of the net. It was nearly right there as Schwint. Looks to carry out. He's got Kanadi working to his right. Finds Kanadi with the puck. Driving right at Baker, who tripped him down. Big chance here for Mississauga. They can get the lead back to two on the power play as Baker heads off for the trip. Yeah, Ty Collins, uh, we mentioned uh, his PK unit quite a bit, but his power play unit is also just as good as he's quite the special team player in this tournament. Sillinger guides the puck to the middle of the ice, working it out wide. Sillinger in on the attack, trying to get it back. And now it'll be taken up ahead by Sharp. Hardy in over the line, Washkrick works wide, Whitaker back to the middle. Hardy into the crowd in front. Sogard down, and the puck knocked back out of the zone, and it's Medicine Hat in control. He and Washkrick through the traffic. Puck gets bobbled, taken along by the Tigers. Clayton turns, works it one back, and now gets it in return. Clayton approaches the Mississauga line, tried to spin his way in. Won't matter in the end because it's back to even in full five on five, and Medicine Hat's back in good position. They'll knock the puck loose on the attempt into the offensive zone. Just about halfway through the second period. Tigers in over the steel head line. Working to the right wing side. Pass out front onto the backhand. And Lochner just wasn't able to get that into the back of the net. Yeah, it was a great job by defensively on that play. Really not giving too much room for the opposition to get one on that. Pruder to Dodig in the middle of the slot. Now back to the line. Spence works around one. Tries to play off for Christner. It was behind him. They'll regroup it at the line. Callahan down low. Nice hit along the end boards. Puck gets left around the back of the Medicine Hat net. And now taken up and out by the Tigers. Two on three up the rink. Got a little bit of work to do. Using the defenseman. Looked like Clayton who jumped in. They're able to get loose. Pardon me, it was Van Imp. Now back to the line. Worked on to the right side. Across to the left where Van Imp saves. And that one taken away by Del Bell Blues. Worked on to Porta Callison out. Del Bell Blues has it poked away. 5.40 left in the second period. Rush into the Mississauga zone. Just poked by Spence at the last second or Brown would have had an opportunity. Puck taken, worked along the line. Brown rescues it out at the right point. Back once again. Van Impel step onto it. Plays it to the slot. They score! 
Brown in the high slot on the one timer ties the game at two. What a blast from the sh from the slot there as Brown just got everything he possibly could on that puck to find the back of the net. But leading up to that, Medicine Hat, what a play. Moving the puck all around the ice, using all five players. Uh, passing the puck around, moving the puck around till you have an opportunity for the shot that you liked. And right there, you can't go wrong. That was a coach's dream sequence for Medicine Hat. And Elijah Brown, as soon as he got the opportunity, stepped in and went hammer time. Puck back to the line. Del Mastro drive. That hit a leg on the way through. And now you got to think momentum in the camp of the Tigers. But the puck is stolen. Whitaker's chance blocked on the way through. Whitaker again circling on the left wing side. Plays it to Hardy. Out towards the line. It'll be Del Mastro who rings back glass. Puck played to Sogard's goal. He tried to play it. Oh, wow, that ended up in his feet. As he tried to play it out behind the net. Somehow it got stuck. About a minute left here in the second period. Stillinger plays along to the side of the net. Edmonds makes the stop on Chizowski. Del Mastro carries out. Works it for Whitaker, who delays. Puck taken along. Washkrick back in front. That one will come loose. Puck is out of the zone. Three seconds down to two. One last chance for a shot from the Tigers. And Baker gets tripped on his way to the net with three-tenths of a second to go in the second. It's a Medicine Hat power play. Yeah, this is a costly time for Ty Collins. Second period will come to an end. It won't matter much there, Brandon, but that could be huge in the third. Yeah, that's practically a full two minutes to begin the third period with the man advantage. So uh, that's not the best time for Ty Collins to take a penalty. Thanks for watching the Memorial E Cup presented by Kia. Be sure to enter for your chance to win daily prizes and a chance at winning a grand prize of a $1,000 prepaid Visa gift card. Today's promo code is Memorial Cup, and you can enter the contest at chl.ca slash Memorial E Cup. Once again, today's promo code is Memorial Cup, and you can enter the contest at chl.ca slash Memorial E Cup. We enter the third period. The Medicine Hat Tigers on the power play. A potentially decisive game two hangs in the balance. Medicine Hat leads the series one to nothing. You can see that on your screen at the top as Baker plays forward, has a look up, plays it onto the slot. Svekovsky turns, just couldn't get it on to goal as Kemp found him. Washkirk the other way, shorthanded, plays it out front. Sogard with a huge stop. Back in front, Washkirk couldn't find it. Del Mastro keeps it alive. Again, Washkirk there. Puck knocked loose. Washkirk right back on top of it. Continues to work shorthanded. And now the puck will be taken by the Tigers. Clayton plays it deep into his own end. We're even in full, five on five. Puck carried across the Mississauga line. Spread wide, look for the middle. Puck rolled the goal, and Kai Edmonds had to jump on that. He had Kemp ready and waiting right out in front of the goal. Yeah, you can kind of feel the pressure on Ty Collins right now. He had a couple of great opportunities at the beginning of this third period. He knows he cannot go down right now. I see this. He could be eliminated at the at the end result of this game if Minnesota Pat wins. Clayton at the top. Sillinger works it along. Long drive. That one's going to be blockered aside. Puck carried up ahead by Kanadi. Wanted it for Ty Collins through the middle. That one will be taken aside. And right back into the front of the net. Svekovsky, pardon me, Chizowski looks up for it. And Svekovsky was briefly down. Looks like he's back up to his skates and moving forward. Puck carried around the back of goal. Chizowski to the line. Working wide, shot, Edmonds makes the stop as Sillinger got it cleanly to the net. We're past seven minutes into the third. Still tied at two. Dodig on for Collins, knocked away from him. Puck played wide up the wing. Crafts his way over the line. It'll be stolen there by Spence who plays wide. Christner across, shot from Pruder. Well wide of the goal, didn't find that where he wanted it. Tigers look to counter, approaching the halfway point of the third. It's centered. Edmonds looked to poke it away, 
and he'll have to cover it up as the puck got into the midsection. 10-15 to go. And, Brandon, you got to feel like we're getting close to maybe a next goal win scenario. Yeah, exactly. Uh, not a lot of time remaining in regulation. So, and Medicine well, Hat just found it. Puck played to the side of the goal. Brown to Lochner to the back of the net. 3-2 Medicine Hat. Th this is huge for Lucas Fagosti as that now the pressure really is on Ty Collins. Less than 10 minutes to go in this in this game before he could be uh, potentially eliminated. That's just a pretty passing right in front of the goaltender. Got him looking side to side, and then that bomb to the back of the net will make it 3-2 Medicine Hat. Oh, my goodness. Down the stretch we go. And now the puck played back in front of the Mississauga goal. And away from danger, McNabb will recover it in his own end. Puck played ahead, left wing, uh, pardon me, right wing side moving towards the left. It'll be dropped back. Exchanged. Kemp couldn't get it cleanly across the line. Worked along. McNabb will bring in. Keeps it wide on the left. Puck poked loose, but they had a safety valve back in neutral ice. It'll be rolled onto and carried forward. Puck over the Mississauga line, knocked back out, but down to seven minutes to go. Steelhead's just trying to deny entry. They don't want to let the Tigers get set up. Puck played back through neutral ice. Now they'll drive into the offensive zone. Puck carried to the corner, stripped loose by Penman. Knocked away initially, but Sharp jumped onto it. He'll carry wide for Washkirk to the front of the net. Sogard makes a huge stop as Hardy got a touch on that puck. 5-12 left in the third. Yeah, Sogard, he's doing what he does best, and that's showing up at clutch moments. Another big stop there on Ty Collins and the Steelheads. The Tigers tower in the twine, keeping Medicine Hat in the lead. And he'll continue to do so here as he hops back on top of the puck. And I wonder if we're going to see a timeout called early here with Ty Collins knowing he's got to get one. And yeah, it, that's exactly what we have. Yeah, and you know, uh, Medicine Hat, they're not going to take any chances in front of the net. Uh, I expect Sogard to hang on to that puck from here on out. Brandon, we are in for a sprint to the finish. Schwint and Sillinger on the draw. Sillinger wins it back. Under four and a half to go. If Medicine Hat can hang on, they punch their ticket to the final on Thursday night. Baker working along the line. And this could be a big advantage for Lucas Svakovsky because he'll get to watch semifinal number two tomorrow between Acne Bathurst and St. John. He'll get to prep for his opponent on Thursday if he can finish this one out here. Yeah, exactly. He, he'll be able to study and try to break down the other teams if he walks out of here. Yeah, being the first team to advance to the final could really have its advantage as Sillinger... Plays it wide, gets it right back. Now in all over the line. Svekovsky to the front of the net. And that one didn't work out. Chizowski for Svekovsky. That wouldn't go either. But we're under a minute to go. Will we see Edmonds head to the bench? Kanadi off the boards, tries it. Sogard with the glove. Oh, has he been good in this tournament? That was a game-saving glove hand right there. Matt Sogard. It's just phenomenal. Every game you watch him, you, you see at least three big-time saves out of him. A little bit surprised that Edmonds didn't go to the bench there. Face off with 43 seconds to go, but Medicine Hat wins it. Puck taken around back of their own net. Played up to the line, and now it'll come out. Three Tigers attack forward. Chance to go, and they score! Medicine Hat! They can feel it now! Kemp! In front of the goal, he'll double the lead. It's four to two. They've scored four straight in the hockey game and now sit just seconds away from a berth in the final. Yeah, this is unbelievable. Uh, what a strong series Messon had played so far. They really battled adversity against Ty Collins and now with only 30 seconds remaining on the clock of a two goal cushion as he looks like he's about to st stamp his name into the finals. Drag into the offensive zone. Puck play to the corner. Penman up and out. Collins needs two in the next 20 seconds. Hardy in over the line. They got to get something to Sogard's goal. Hardy for Washkirk. That's blocker to side by Sogard. 
McNabb around back of his own net. Will take under 10 seconds to go. Kemp strides away, has a look at goal. Puck is deflected into the corner. Three seconds and two left. 2.6 to go. It'll just be a formality now. Face off in the offensive end. The Tigers can start to celebrate. They're going to pick up this semifinal. Washcrick drives at the length of the rink. It's two games. And the Medicine Hat Tigers will head to the finals of the Memorial E Cup on Thursday night. And we'll be right back with Lucas Svekovsky and our Brandon Scott after this. Welcome back to the Memorial E Cup presented by Kia. One half of the final has been decided. And Medicine Hat fans, you can start to celebrate. You are going to the final of the Memorial E Cup presented by Kia. All thanks to the great work of Lucas Svekovsky, who's standing by with our Brandon Scott. Lucas, welcome to the broadcast and congratulations. You made it to the finals. What's running through your head right now? Sorry about that, my bad. Uh, yeah, just obviously pretty excited, uh, lots of excitement. Um, you know, the boys just battled through it and it was nice to see. So um, yeah, it was fun. Uh, now walk me through uh, game one of this. It looked like uh, you were down for a bit and then you had a big uh, late performance to really carry yourself to lead. Uh, oh, were you a little nervous or did you feel like you, you might've been down and out? I wasn't too nervous. I mean, um, you know, he was a really good player. The Wi-Fi kept cutting in and out and stuff. So obviously that was a little bit frustrating, but um, yeah, you know, uh, Mads came up with some huge saves again, uh, kind of kept me in it there. So uh, yeah, a lot of the credit goes to him. And then in the second game, Mads Sogard, uh, he had to make a couple of uh, big stops again in the third period. Uh, is it just making you feel a lot much more comfortable knowing that you have a rock in that and Matt Sogard? Yeah. I mean, he's been so solid all tournaments. So um, yeah, you know, like I said before, without him, uh, you know, some of the games could have been a lot different. Um, but yeah, you know, I thought, um, I, I thought all the boys played well, uh, pretty solid defensively as well too. So, um, but yeah, having him is obviously huge. And one goal that really sticks out in my mind that second game was that bomb by Elijah Brown in front. Uh, it seemed like you passed the puck all around the outside before finally finding a man in the slot. Was that a, a plan that you drew up? I didn't really draw it up. No, he was doing a really got, good job, um, you know, defending, uh, keeping me on my, the outside and stuff. So I kind of just saw a lane there. Um, I think uh, Naber came down if I'm not just – dished him a backhand pass and you know you can count on brownie to score those he's got a good shot so yeah it was cool and, and tell me about the play of cole sillinger in this tournament he, he looks like he's one of the big guns he, that you lean on for a big goal yeah you know just like in real life uh, he comes up clutch obviously you know super super good young players so um yeah he's definitely someone to look out for next year as well 
and, and tell me, uh, do you feel like you got a little bit of revenge uh, for one of your friends, Trevor Longo, after losing to uh, to Ty Collins in the last game to kind of deny that friendship battle? Yeah, I, I guess in a way, yeah, uh, a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, was there any advice that Trevor Longo gave to you coming into this matchup about going up against Ty Collins? He was kind of scaring me a little bit, not going to lie. He was just telling me how good this guy is and stuff. So I was pretty nervous going into it. And he is a really good player. So, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much all he said about it. And tell me, you're now in the Memorial E-Cup Finals. Are you nervous at all going up into this big heavyweight matchup? I mean, you know, whatever happens, happens. Uh, I don't really think it's a big deal. Um, you know, I'm going to try to win, obviously. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm just glad I made it this far. So. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm too nervous about losing or winning. So, And there's not a lot of time till that e gets presented, but before that, there's the other semifinal matchup. Uh, do you think we could pencil you into watching? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll probably, I'll probably um, give it a peek for sure. Yeah. See what I'm going up against. Perfect. Thank you again, Lucas, for joining me on the broadcast. And again, congratulations on making the finals. Thanks so much. Well, Brandon, semifinal number one is in the books. Lucas Vekovsky and the Medicine Hat Tigers head to the Memorial E-Cup final. You know he's excited about it. He wants to have that trophy at the end of it and that winner's uh, check next to his name. Uh, But there's still another semifinal to be decided, and he is going to have a tough test in the final. Whether it is Dylan Champagne and the Acadie Bathurst Teton or Riley Bezo and the St. John Sea Dogs, it's not going to be an easy final. No, it's really not. Riley Bezo, uh, he leaves it all on the line. And it, really, some gutsy performances he's played so far. And then Dylan Champagne, the comeback king, uh, he, you can't rule him out at any point in the game. Whether you're up by one or two goals, you'll find a way. Well, and that's exactly it. And that's where we'll stand tomorrow night uh, when we see St. John and Acne Bathurst square off. But tonight, when you see the way that Svekovsky was able to handle himself, we wondered about what it would look like the first time he saw adversity in the tournament. He got down two in game two and then scored four unanswered to pick up the victory. It just seems like nothing in this tournament is going to phase him. No, he, he's definitely riding a hot hand, and it certainly helps with the play of Mad Sogard in that. Uh, that guy has just been phenomenal. He, he really, uh, He's the best goaltender in this tournament right now. It, it, he's causing some fits uh, as he only allowed at most three goals a game. So that's just, uh, it's going to be really hard to beat that. And then he's just finding a way to click offensively. So he, he's definitely a strong candidate to, to be hoisting the Memorial E Cup at the end of this tournament. Now, we'll talk about whoever comes out of semifinal two tomorrow night, but you got to think if Svekovsky goes on to win the E-Cup, if you want to talk about an MVP on his team, it's got to be somewhere between Mad Sogard, who might be the favorite in that category, but an underdog who I think probably would be just as deserving would be Cole Sillinger. Yeah, Sillinger has came up time in and time again as he, he performs in big plays. He, I feel like he only scores in the third period when he when he's uh, counted on, when the back's against the wall, and that's exactly where he thrives. He, he's been a real player, an anchor on that top line for Medicine Hat. Those clutch situations is where he has thrived. Okay, that's all for semifinal number one. Tomorrow we move forward to semifinal number two, and Brandon, what are you looking forward to? Uh, just a great game. Like uh, I really feel like we have two even competitors here. I want to see if Dylan Champagne... Uh, what he could really do. I, I feel like we're just scratching the surface on this guy as he's just been phenomenal. And I don't know how many times he had to come back and find a way to win, but I just know against Bradley Bizo, you can't go down. So it's going to be a real treat for us to watch. Absolutely. One half of the Memorial E cup final has been decided. The medicine hat tigers piloted by Lucas Fakovsky are in tomorrow night. will decide the f- number two in the finals. And that will be decided between Dylan champagne, the Acadie Bathurst Teton against Riley Bizot and the St. John sea dogs and all QM JHL matchup to see who will go to the final puck drops at six fifteen. best two out of three. Don't miss a second of that one for my broadcast partner, Brandon Scott and all 
of our crew who made this tournament possible. I'm Reed Duffy. Can't wait to have you back tomorrow night for semifinal number two. Thank <laughs> you.